just trying to connect with people and feeling like an honest person with people that, you know, that I was portraying myself in an honest way. And it made me feel sad to, to connect with, say, a gay man. And then thinking that I, because I had a female anatomy or was female from the waist down, that in, in some way I was forcing him to be heterosexual and having sex with me. And that made me feel sad and it made me feel turned off and uh, unhappy in, in my sexual activities. Uh, I, I wanted to be a gay man and I wanted him to be a gay man with me. Mm -hmm. I, well, like, like the, the transsexual issue, I feel that uh, people are afraid of this and uh, are, um, uh, have preconceived notions um, that are incorrect because they don't, they have never met anyone like that. They've mm -hmm. never met somebody with AIDS, so they feel like, oh God, you know, what if they, you know, what if there's somebody in the room with AIDS? That would just be awful. And once that happens, uh, you know, once they meet somebody that has AIDS, it's like no big deal. So I think it's really important that, that uh, you know, that people do talk about it and be out front about it and try to educate. Mm -hmm. and, so <laughs> rather than anticipating a negative response, you feel that uh, by being open, you have an opportunity to educate someone right. who is ignorant about your illness right. and uh, so that perhaps they can be more comfortable with it. Right. And the next person that comes along, they're not going to, you know, will be will benefit from, from your right. from your openness. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Obviously, you've taken that same stance with reference to your uh, rather unusual transsexual condition. Right, right. <clears throat> and uh, with it, w as I recall, your explanation with the same hope that uh, as you come forward about the fact that uh, as a female to male transsexual who's interested in a male partner, you realize that uh, your, how did you put it, you're defining a new syndrome. <laughs> right. Uh, Right. Somebody's got to be the first one to open their big mouth and, and admit that this is what they're up to. And uh, as long as no one, is, no one else is talking about it, it it's going to be forever silent and no one's ever going to hear about it. But uh, I feel like I spent so many years trying to figure out what was going on inside of my head and trying to find a place in society that I felt comfortable in where I could understand what was going on that that uh, for me to, to, once I found that niche, uh, to me it's such a joyous kind of a situation that um, I just don't see any reason to hide it. I don't see mm -hmm. any reason to, you know, uh, ma make up a, a story that uh, isn't true and, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, try to hide m my feelings because it took me so long to figure them out in the first place. Yeah. I think that, that Going through the whole transsexual process really prepared me for the for living with AIDS. In that, uh, I've I've had to deal with having an uncooperative body and a um, not being able to rely on my physical status as anything that's going to help me throughout my life, and uh, and I just see AIDS as just one more problem with my body that I'm used to having all these problems with my body and, and trying to kind of get around them somehow. Another thing that happened to me in, in 1989 um, is my older sister died and she, uh, she was three years older than me and uh, during the, her last four years uh, she was incapacitated with uh, multiple sclerosis and uh, literally laid in bed and without moving for four years. And watching that, <laughs> I'm glad that I went through that because it uh, it helped me to to see that even if you're that <coughs> bad, in in that bad of a state, that you still can have quality life. And you know, even even if uh, the only thing you can do is uh, <coughs> you know lay in bed and listen to uh, you know audio tape or watch television or something like that. There, there's still some quality to your life that it's not, uh, um, you know, that there's still something you can do to make life worthwhile.